Matt from Overland Travelers. Today we're finally going to be doing a full rundown of our 2022 Troop Carrier. So this run through today is going to be really thorough. I'm going to go through everything in its entirety. So it'll be a bit longer, but if you like your troopies or if you have one yourself, I'm sure there'll be heaps of value in watching what we've done to this one so you can get a few ideas for yourself. We're going to start with the exterior elements of the car and then we'll move on to the interior and the camping side of the whole troopie setup. All right, so we might as well start in the front of the car here. Start right here at the bull bar. So this is from Off-Road Animal. Uh, it's a Toro bar. I think it looks absolutely fantastic. That's the main reason why I went for it. It just looks so cool and it really complements sort of the lines of the front end of the car. And then mounted on it, we have the uh, nine inch Sabre spotties. They've been really good. They've got the little daytime running strip in the middle. These have saved us in a few occasions. One notable, notable time was in the Simpson Desert when we needed to drive in the dark to go get some parts for a mate. These really came into their own and they're just great thing to have spotties just for safety when you're driving at night around Australia. Camels, horses, cows, roos, you name it, it's out there. So good pair of spotties is really good. As I said, they're from Sabre. Also from Sabre is the winch, which is a 12,000 pound winch. We've used it a couple of times. It's more of an insurance policy if we're by ourselves or we need to get someone out. And that's worked great so far. Here we've got our GME aerial. We've got the long aerial on at the moment for more flat, long distances. We will go more into what exact radio we have inside soon. Besides that, that is pretty much um, everything on the front end. While I'm here, we do have the whole car wrapped in a Bushwraps PPF protective coating. So if you you know if you got your pride and joy and you're going out bush with it a lot, these things are fantastic. They work really really well. It's a self healing sort of a material. So if it gets scratched when it heats up. The scratches will disappear. This wrap really saved us on the canning stock route when the vegetation was just insane. So really good to have and it's a nice little insurance policy, especially if you're getting a brand new Land Cruiser. These things hold their value so well, you want to keep the paint good. Highly recommend that, it's from Bush Wraps. We've also just got the uh, retro grill on here, that's genuine from Toyota. I just love that look. I've got an old 40 series, so having that is just really, really nice. Moving around to the side here, now, we've got these color-coded flares on. These are from ARB. I'm fairly sure they're a fiberglass. Could be a plastic, I'm not actually sure, but they do feel really nice and sturdy. We did have some before from Connect 4x4. Honestly, they kind of just fell off the car after um, one big trip out in the bush. I just wanted to go for something a bit different. I wanted to go the color-coded. They were black before, but yeah, I think they look great, and they also help us with legalities, with tire pokes sticking out. We've got bigger tires and your width of your car needs to match that of your tires. So they really help with that. Uh, Safari Armac Snorkel, this is the big one. Again, really good, just company that's been around for ages. Good, great air intake, good air flow, raises it up. Um, the stock one isn't a sealed air intake, it's just a raised air intake. So this is if you wanna do your water crossings and things like that. Also they say, you know, it's getting it up higher out of the dust. I don't know about all those benefits, but I mean, at the end of the day, if you're doing water crossings, you'd rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. So yeah, the Safari snorkel there. Now you can see these really distinct stripes down the side. They're from Togue Nation. Now every man and his dog has got a Sandy Torp Land Cruiser with black rims and accents. So it's pretty hard to make them your own. Uh, these are sort of a retro kind of Toyota design. I just wanted to go the gray color. They match our seats in the interior, which I'll run through later. But yeah, I think it's just really nice and simple. As I said, I like the retro kind of a, um, kind of look and it kind of makes it your own a little bit. Again, people have these stripes, but yeah, I really like it. Again, it's from Togue Nation. So on the side here, we have our ARB side steps. The stock side steps are just really small aluminum ones that are kind of really flimsy and kind of a bit ugly in my opinion. I really like the ARB. It's a satin finish, which is the same as our bull bar and rear bar. Uh, they just provide a bit more step. So if I need to get up on the back at this point and again around the other side, it's good for that. Um, it also provides a bit more protection for the body underneath the car. 
All right, at the rear here, we have our rear bar. So this one is from the Cruiser Company. Again, I just really like the way this bar looks, uh, but it functions, like its functionality is really good as well. I like these hoops here, a bit of extra protection uh, for the body at that corner, which is sort of a bit of a dangerous area or one that gets bent up quite often. So that's really nice to have that there. And then we've got the two rear tires on it for our big trips. We like to have two spares. They've also got these road vision reverse lights in the on the bar. And they're really, really nice, really bright. When you're out in the bush and you're trying to find camp in the dark and that kind of thing, it's great to have some nice bright lights when you're reversing up. We've also got our rear vision camera on here. It's a big car with lots of blind spots. So having a rear vision camera, again, just really nice little insurance policy for yourself. On the step here, this again uh, is part of the camper, but we'll go through more of the camping setup, but that step comes with the headspace camper, which I'll run through later, but that just attaches to the tow bar. It's a really nice way to get up into the car. So that's the exterior elements of the car. Let's run through the engine and everything underneath the car. All right, first thing you might notice with the bonnet is the gas struts. That was provided by PDT, which did all our uh, engine mods. So they're in uh, Goolwa, just south of Adelaide, if you're interested in getting some uh, engine modifications done, especially the Land Cruisers. They are real wizards at what they do but they had these gas struts. The gas struts are just a really nice to have when you're working on the car. It's a pretty heavy bonnet. It just pops itself up. It's just a nice little one percenter kind of thing. Now, in the engine bay, first off, the car does have a tune. I think it's making around 600 Newton meters at, at the wheels uh, on 35s, which is pretty good. And it feels like the car should feel from factory. It's still a relatively safe tune as far as tunes go, but it's one of my favorite modifications to the car and it just really livened it up. And even with the weight we've got, this thing really gets up and boogies. Uh, so it's really, really nice. Now, in the engine bay itself, uh, we have had the clutch changed out to a, I believe it's a 1500 Newton meter clutch from Outback Extreme. That's been great so far. I like the feel of it. It's got some sort of a dual diaphragm in it, which makes the pedal feel pretty close to stock. It's slightly heavier, but you just get used to it straight away. Uh, so that's really nice. Also in the engine bay, we've got the FFM airbox here. So this is a uh, custom airbox, which actually uses the stock filter for a 70 series. So it's good that you don't have to change any of that gear, but yeah, great. Just, you know, it's a pretty simple thing. You don't want to dust these engines. They're pretty sensitive. The stock air filters are known to sort of dust themselves or get a bit of dust ingress. So that's really nice to have that. Uh, following on with the engine protection, we've got a fuel filter. This is a pre-filter and we've got the nice PDT bracketry here, which is all color-coded sandy torp, which we really like. Again, it's just a little bit of an insurance policy. If you're going to get really bad fuel out in, you know, some random service station in the middle of nowhere, a bit of water in it or something like that, it's great to have these kind of fuel filters. On top here, we've got this intercooler cover from SRW. Again, really nice, just simple product. It just Velcros onto the top and it might seem a bit crazy, but sometimes uh, I have heard of stones coming in through the big bonnet scoop. They get into the fins on your intercooler, they rattle around and they actually eventually wear a hole into your intercooler. Again, it's, this is a cheap insurance policy for a really expensive issue. Uh, and it's just nice to have. You can get them for the radiator as well. I haven't got one, I've been meaning to get one. Uh, we also have the catch can. Um, it is a Provent catch can. It's down in there. Um, but again, another little insurance policy for your car. You do have to remember to drain them uh, every 5,000 Ks or so. You really don't want them to load up and then um, that can do even far, far more damage to your engine if you leave it. So just something to note if you are getting one, just keep your maintenance up on it. Staying in the engine bay, uh, we've got our um, diff breathers here. They're from Project Overlander um, in Sydney. I think it's worth noting at this point, Pretty much everything on this car was done by Project Overlander in Sydney. So if you are after a um, one-stop shop for all your overlanding needs, uh, Project Overlander, Western Sydney is fantastic. You'll see all their build-out in sign soon. But they're diff breathers. That's from Project Overlander. Um, they've also got this really nice positive um, battery terminal here, which they all make up as part of their 12 volt systems, which I'll run through later, but that's just a really nice clean system. They've got MIDI fuses for everything, you know, my air compressor, you know, electric brakes, BMS, everything like that. So that's a really nice tidy unit. While we're in the engine bay here, we do have a Bendix brake upgrade, uh, which includes a new brake booster. 
Um, again, this is a dual diaphragm brake booster, far nicer than the stock brakes. Once you start loading these cars up, the stock brakes struggle a bit. Uh, the brake kit also comes with drilled and slotted rotors, brake lines, pads, and your booster. And yeah, it makes a huge difference. It's one of those things, I think, if you're going to be getting a GVM upgrade to your car, if you're going to be loading it up for trips and going up, you know, really heavy weights, I think getting a brake upgrade is just a no-brainer. Uh, it's going to be one of those things, if you use it, really use it once, you're going to be glad. So uh, yeah, great thing to have. So that's pretty much it for the engine. Look, we haven't gone mad um, with it. We haven't upgraded turbos, intercools, injectors, or anything like that. It's just a really basic tune and a couple of cheap insurance policies like your uh, intercooler cover and your airbox and everything like that, fuel filters, um, just to sort of get the longevity out of these engines and just to protect it from those things that can be happening out in the tracks. Another element that we've changed in the engine bay is the alternator. So the alternators in the 70 series is notorious uh, for how poorly positioned it is. It's really low in the engine bay. You get a lot of dirt and muddy ingress, which eventually cooks the alternator. You're not charging your battery, you're not running your car. So we have changed the alternator to a rapid power brushless uh, alternator. It's 150 amp, which is uh, an improvement over the 130 amp stock. So you're getting a bit more power, but the main reason is it's brushless. So because it's brushless, you're not gonna be getting dirt and mud caught up in the brushes and uh, you're not gonna have alternator issues. Rapid power also do fully sealed units. Uh, if you really, really want a robust unit, but this has been really good for us so far. And again, it's just a bit of insurance. When you're out in the tracks, you don't want an alternator failing on you because that can really stop you in your tracks. Uh, it's Australian made, really good product. Rapid power for alternators. Uh, yeah, we really absolutely love it. Let's jump underneath the car, show you some tyre suspensions and a few other things that we've done underneath. All right, moving on to tyres and rims. Uh, we've just got the ROH black track rims. I just really like these rims. They're just simple, uh, they're tough. If you know if you do any damage to them out in the bush, you can sort of just bash them out a bit. A bit different to alloys. They do weigh a bit more, but I like the look and the functionality of them uh, out out in the tracks. Tires. We have the Wild Peak uh, MTs at 315.75.16s, so they're about a 35 inch tire. Now, there's a few things I really like about the 35 inch tires and a few things that I don't like about them. One, when you're on, on the tracks, uh, bigger tires fall into holes less and they feel great off-road. You can really let the air out and bag them out. But being a 35 inch tire, they can scrub. So just keep that in mind if you want to put them on a 70 series, 35 inch can scrub. So there's probably more sensible options out there, but I just love the way they look mainly. And uh, that's enough of a reason for me. So to combat the scrubbing, we have done a few things. One is the lift on the car, which I'll talk more about the suspension soon. But another thing we've done is change out the radius arms. When you lift the car, you change the position of the diff. And to correct that, we've changed the radius arms rather than the off cast bushes that we had before. These J-Max radius arms, one, I think they look really cool, but uh, they've just pushed that diff into a more stock position, um, even with the lift, and it's really helped with the scrubbing on the 35 inch tires. It does happen in really extreme cases still, but generally it's fixed the problem. Uh, so they just have been a nice little addition to the underside of the car. All right, so moving on to the suspension, we went for a pre-rego GVM upgrade in the car. There's a few advantages of that in you know different states, so just check what state you're in. Uh, but this one is from Multi-Drive, and it includes the rear diff correction and also the uh, two-inch parabolic uh, rear leaves lift from Terrain Tamer. Initially, we had the 3780 GVM upgrade. We will be changing it to a 3950. The difference in that is uh, the original track correction we have is a multi-drive true tracker, which has been great, but for us to go that next little bit in weight, uh, we're going to have to upgrade the rear diff. Multi-drive is gonna be doing a whole rear diff for us, but the true tracker has been fantastic so far. It's just a legality sort of issue and engineering. Also, we initially had the 500 to 700 parabolic leaves. Now we have the 700 kilo constant, which has just made the troopy sit a bit better, especially when it's fully loaded because there's a big variance in weight for us with our fluids. So moving on to underneath the car, we have a 90 litre water tank from Long Range Automotive, and that sits up in the middle in between the two fuel tanks. It's quite a, a smart design the handbrake cable actually runs through the tank they've got a tunnel in it um, so it's really maximizing the space you have underneath the car now troopies come stock with two 
tanks, main and a sub at 180 litres, uh, 90 litres in each. We've opted to go for a long range fuel tank. So we have uh, the long ranger rear tank. It's 180 litres just in the rear. So it's a lot of weight over your rear axle, but we don't use it all the time. We just use it when we're on really big trips where we really need that extra range. So we haven't done a massive trip with it yet, but uh, it's been really good so far and it's just good having you know 270 litres of diesel if we want we can fill it right up or we can just put sort of the amount we need in for the distance we're going to be doing it just saves money on fuel and gives you a bit of peace of mind when you're out in the tracks also underneath the car we have a bit of underbody protection it's from explore oz again it's just a bit of cheap insurance for potentially an expensive problem we have a transfer case cover good if you're doing sort of a lot of rocky tracks and we also have a diff lock actuator protector. Again, it's a pretty sort of important component that sits at a pretty um, bad position on your rear diff. Just protects it and saves your diff lock uh, actuator from potentially getting knocked up. Also underneath the car, continuing on sort of with our engine mods, we do have a three inch DPF back exhaust. This being a 2022 model has a DPF. You can't mess around with it. Uh, for legality issues so the three inch back only does so much uh, it does help it breathe a little bit better the engine gets those exhaust gases out and there's a little bit of better of a better note to it as well than the stock uh, but again with the dpf there's not too much you can do with that but that one is from manta and that was part of the kit that pdd did all right let's talk about a few interior elements uh in the front of the cab here because there's a fair bit going on so straight up, you'll see that these definitely aren't stock seats. These are the Shieldman Vario XXLs. I love these seats. I've had them in a car previously. I love the way they look. They look very sleek with the plaid, the gray plaid. I think it matches the stripe on the outside. Uh, it's great. But the most important thing is, is they're very, very comfortable on really, really long drives. I find them super supportive. And they're one of the only seats my back doesn't get sore in. Absolutely fantastic modification if you're doing really, really long drives. Another great mod is just the one stone armrests. I think they're an absolute must on the 70 series because the doors are so thin. You don't really have anywhere to rest your elbow on. So even with the window up, I can rest my elbow nicely, hold the steering wheel. Another benefit gives you a cup holder on either side. So it is a really cheap, uh, nice little modification. They're really well made, Australian, Australian made. Great thing to have in the cab there. Extra cup holders is always good in the 70 series. In the center here, we have our Bushman 15 liter roadie fridge freezer. So this can be run right down to minus 18 and we were running it at minus 18 for the whole trip that we did last year, three months. Great having that extra 15 liters of freezer space just to put, you know, frozen meats and everything in. It also gives you an armrest, two cup holders in the middle. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's far better than the um, stock uh, center console thing you sort of get with the troopies. So really nice to have and it fits with the Shieldman seats and it does have a custom bracket made by Project Overlander. If you are interested yourself, I'm not sure if it fits with the stock seats. That's something you'll have to check. Also in the interior, I've just got this dash mat here, um, which has our Navigator gear pouch on. It's just got things like your radios, some spare sunnies, pens, lighters, knives, things like that you're sort of grabbing every now and then. We've got a scan gauge three here. This just lets me keep an eye on the things like your exhaust gas temperatures, how much fuel we've used, how many Ks we've done, just all your sort of little interesting things to the engine. The main thing I use it for is the EGTs because I want to make sure they don't get too high um, in the troop because that's the kind of things that really starts cooking your turbo if you let it get out of control. Also in the interior here, we've had this uh, panel changed out from the stock one down here. Uh, it's got a few little extra things on it. Mainly it's got our heated seats um, for our Shieldman seats. These come heated. So we wanted that just nice little thing to have in winter. So that little switch fascia here has our buttons for that. Um, nice little USB port, UHF um, input there for the Cat5 input. Talking about UHF, we've got the GME XRS Connect here. Again, really nice Australian made unit. Got this in fairly recently, but I'm really liking it. And it actually pairs up with the button here. So this is a hands-free button, so you can just push to talk and uh, you don't have to actually take it off and talk. So if you're sort of in a situation where it might be a bit hard to let go of the steering wheel, this is just really nice to have. All right, moving on to the head unit here. It's from Explore Oz. The same people do the underbody protection. So essentially what this is, is a uh, an Android tablet. It's a really nice big screen. Uh, and it gives me a few uh, really cool things that the previous one, the stock one doesn't. Uh, one being Apple CarPlay. If you haven't used Apple CarPlay before, it's just fantastic. Hook up to your phone, it gets your Google Maps up. 
easy to take phone calls and everything like that. I do have hands-free with this unit as well. It gives me a reverse camera, as I said before, heaps of blind spots in this big car when you're reversing up, so this is just really nice to have. Uh, but because it's an Android tablet, it gives you a few other advantages because you can download essentially any app you want. Uh, one of them is HEMA Maps. It's got a GPS module in it, so when you're out in the tracks, we've got HEMA Maps uh, loaded onto it and we can see our GPS location it moves along uh, the map with us. So that's absolutely fantastic for navigation. It's our main navigation unit. We also have the Red Arc Red Vision app downloaded. Uh, I'll go through more about our 12 volt system soon when we get into the camping side of things, but the beauty of having the Red Vision app on your head unit here is I can turn anything on or off as we're driving. So I can check one, how the batteries are going, if they're getting charged up nicely or if there might be something wrong there. Uh, I can also turn on our 12 volt camp oven if we wanna cook some stuff up for lunch or something like that. Or one of my favorite things is we can get our hot water unit started as we're driving, which is great because you know you wanna be using those big ticket power items like heating your water up. When you're driving, your alternator's running. So when you get to camp, you've got a hot shower ready to go. So those things, those elements with this head unit makes it really, really usable and just a great addition to the whole sort of interior and just makes it feel a bit more modern. Moving up here, we've just got this uh, shelf. This is from Headspace Campers, which did the whole roof conversion. I'll run through that later. We actually just use this shelf for our towels, <laughs> beach towels and our um, tech towels that we've got. It's just maximizing space in the troopy, troopy and finding little nooks and crannies for your random things. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much just what we use that for and it's just really nice to have. We also have a Red Arc Tow Pro Elite. That is just literally, if we need uh, electric brakes, um, uh, braking for towing a big load. So that could just be a trailer or a van or a camper trailer, anything like that. We haven't done that yet, but I just put it in for just in case. All right, now that we've run through the interior elements, the Troopy, let's get into one of the main things uh, with this car is the camping setup. So probably one of the biggest elements to the camping setup for the Troopy is the headspace rooftop conversion. I'm sure you've all seen these kind of conversions, but if you haven't, essentially the roof is removed from the Troopy, this conversion is put on, the tent and bed is built in, and I'll show you how it works now. The roof's been popped up. I can pop these trap doors up inside. All right, so now that the roof's been popped up, you can see that I can stand up inside if I want to. I can get out of the elements. I can get changed. I can cook inside if I really wanted to. Uh, so yeah, it just makes a troopy a much more livable space. Um, even for two people inside, there's quite a lot of room. Uh, and then when you want to go to bed, you can just pull the bed down, which I'll do now. All right, so I'm upstairs now in the Headspace rooftop camper. As you can see, there's heaps of room up here. We've got pretty much a double bed, so it's great for two people. Got the canvas pockets up here, USB ports. We've got a touch light up there. You can leave all your bedding in here. We do put our pillows down on the trapdoor end when we pack it up, just to make it a bit easier. But there's plenty of room for the bedding up here. Keep in mind, this is the high top rooftop conversion from Headspace Campers. They do two versions, a lower profile and a high top, depending if you wanna go for the slimmer look or the more comfortable bedding up top. We've got about 150 mils of foam here, so it's really, really comfortable. We actually have the same bed topper uh, in here that we have at home. So it's very similar to our bed at home. Another few little uh, luxuries we have up here is a 12 volt heater blanket and we've got a cigarette socket up top on the trap door here. The 12 volt heater blanket is one of the best things uh, for when you're camping. Uh, you put it on half an hour before bed and by the time you jump up into bed, it's toasty warm, which is really, really nice and makes those really cold areas much more easy to go to. This whole conversion is just super comfortable, quick, convenient, and compared to a rooftop tent, it's similar, but you're getting the advantage of being able to stand up inside the troopy when you're not using the bed. Also for rooftop tents, they're a lot heavier. They um, need to go on a roof rack, so troopies are already top heavy enough. Um, so getting that weight lower, lower down and also less weight. I think the whole conversion is around 70 kilos on top of the 
standard roof. So yeah, definitely a lot lighter than a rooftop tent. A few elements that I love about the tent is the really, really big windows. So you can fold these canvas sections right down, which is really, really nice to get uh, heaps of airflow through the tent. You can also open the whole window up itself and take the mesh down if you want to. It's got a massive window at the back as well. Now we also have an awning which runs around the outside. So unless it's an absolutely crazy storm, sideways rain happening, you're not gonna get any rain in the tent at all. Um, so yeah, the awning's really nice. It's got really strong spring steel poles um, that are probably the best I've ever seen for a tent and they hold the canvas really nice and taunt. The pitch of the tent is one of the best things. It's, I think it's the biggest pitch in the market. There's others out there that are a bit lower and makes means you have to sleep at the other end of the bed. This, we are more than comfortable sleeping with this end, at this end of the bed. Our heads aren't close to the roof at all. Also, the twin trapdoor set up at the rear is just really smart. You only have to open up one when you want to climb down in the night and you don't have to wake anyone up or you can sort of have one down, one up if you want some clothes on it. It's just really nice not having a massive big trapdoor like some of the conversions do or no trapdoors at all, which other conversions have as well. So we really love those trapdoors. Really makes the Troopies one of the best two-person tour options, I think. Before I get into the full interior setup, I'll just note these seat organizers. Uh, they're from Navigator. They just clip onto the back of your seats. We can fold the seats forward and we can grab, you know, all the things that you want quickly, like head torches. We've got an EPIRB there. On the other side, we've got our first aid and snake bike kit, uh, sunscreen, just really things you want to be able to fold the seat forward and grab out quickly. So they're really nice to have and just add some nice little storage pockets into the Troopies. All right, so moving into the interior setup of the Troopie, one of the most important things in any Troopie build. Uh, this one was made by Project Overlander in Sydney. Uh, as you can see, it's a powder-coated uh, alley. Uh, I think it looks absolutely fantastic. We love the timber bench top. It's just put together really, really well. This thing has been, th this setup has been through some really, really rough terrain, and uh, we have not had any problems with it moving around or things becoming loose or just the integrity of it changing. Um, so yeah, absolutely fantastic build. So I'll run through some of the elements. Uh, obviously we've got this big bench top up here. This neat little party trick we've got is a desk. So that's really nice if you want to jump on the computer. You can chuck a computer here and you're not leaning over in an awkward position. So it's just a nice natural sitting position. So that's a really nice little feature that we use a lot when we're editing on the road. In here we've got a storage sort of compartment. Uh, we've just got things in bags. You know, our hoses for filling up the car, air hoses, tire kits, random things like that. But sitting in here is our hot water unit. Now this is an Aquios six litre hot water unit. It's a 12 volt unit and it heats up six litres to around about 70 degrees. And then you can mix that with the main tank. It's absolutely fantastic having a hot shower, but I just find the electric is a lot more, or a lot easier than fiddling around with all your gas setups and everything like that. And with lithium batteries these days, I think this is a really, really good option. It doesn't use too much power considering, uh, yeah, you're heating up water, which is a pretty power intensive thing. But we'll run through our shower setup more when we go around to that side of the car. But on top here, we've just got this little unit. Uh, we've got some 240 volt outlets, some USB and USB-C points, and we've got our Travel Buddy 12 volt oven. Again, really nice Australian made bit of gear. And we use that a fair bit in our trip, cooking pies, uh, heating things up. I made a cake for Adrian for his birthday. The main thing is, is with them, you have to remember you have it. Sounds a bit silly, but you, when you're going through, you're getting your shopping, just remember you got these little ovens. There's little, really nice little two person mini roasts and things that you can get. I'd say the general rule of thumb with these things though, is crank it to the maximum heat, which is 200 and double the time it says to cook. And then it'll probably be about on the money. Uh, but yeah, really good little unit uh, that we use a fair bit. Do have interior lights. One is up on the underside of the tent. And we also have some here on the side. These are dimmable and they're on the going windows. I'll show you them later. Under here, we've got a massive storage compartment. Now that is big enough to fit a toilet, a little toilet. So if you're going to places that uh, require, require you to have a toilet, it's just great to have that option. When we're not having the toilet in there, it's just a massive storage compartment. Then under here, under this seat, is just more storage that you can access just by lifting this panel up. So again, that's a huge storage compartment in there. We've got two more massive drawers in here. 
which really are huge. What I've found with this kind of storage system in here is there's only a couple of drawers and a few storage compartments, but they're all really big. So you can really figure out how you're gonna store your things. I find if it's too, there's too many small storage compartments, it gets a bit confusing. I just like having nice big compartments that we can sort of choose how we wanna put things into. All right, I'll move to the back of the interior setup here. All right, so there's a fair bit going on at the back. Uh, first thing you'll notice is the Bush Company 85 litre upright fridge. Uh, this thing is absolutely unreal and I love having the ease of access that an upright provides. We have had chest fridges and freezers in the past and honestly, whatever you want is always at the bottom. With the pop top roof, you can have this extra height high bench because you're not worrying about you know having the roof there or anything but yeah just being able to open it up grab it it's right at the back of the car you don't have to crawl into the car to grab something I see a lot of people are putting their fridges behind their seats and things like that honestly I think you just can't go wrong with having your fridge right at the back as I said 85 litre Bushman upright fridge it's got a little freezer compartment and well as well uh, which is fantastic um, when you're going doing those long trips and you just want to keep a bit of meat and stuff um, available so yeah, absolutely fantastic. One of the best mods that we've done having this upright fridge. All right, we've got another storage compartment just in here. This is just an open little hole. We've got things in here like jumper leads. We've got our flag, sand pole. Um, what else? I've got my tool roll in here. Uh, tire changing equipment. So it's just nice just to be able to open it up and grab that out if I need tools quickly. Another storage drawer. As you can see, it's absolutely huge. Um, we've got little sort of food things in here, canned goods, um, dry meals, just whatever you really want. Um, but that's just nice having that stuff accessible at the back. And we've got an even larger, taller drawer here, same length, but you can fit in between it. We've got a chopping board, which is removable. Um, that's really nice to have. And yeah, we've got all our cooking gear in here, uh, pots, pans, plates, everything like that. Close these up. Now, at the back here, we've got another two 240 volt outlets. And we've got our water meter here, just to see what our water level's at. Up here, these are a really good little bit of gear. Um, Outback Gear Solutions, these storage pockets. So you see they're on either side here. Um, we've just got things, so gas hoses, uh, condiments, salt, pepper, things like that. So these are just another really good little storage solution for troopies. You'll find if you have a troopie, you're figuring out ways to intelligently store things and these are a great thing. So there's even more storage under here. There's this panel, if you lift up, we've got all our recovery gear. We've got things like our gloves for our fire. Yeah, you can see our utility ropes and everything like that. And there's another storage compartment just over there, which actually has our uh, air compressor tank in it. It's a five liter tank, I believe, or it could be a 10 liter tank, I can't remember, but that one is from TJM, along with our air compressor, which is also a TJM twin air compressor. The flow, I think, is just enormous on it. It's, I think it's one of the biggest on the market, if not the biggest. I can show you that later, we can put some footage in but I'll show you where we access all our air and water pretty soon. But overall, absolutely love this setup. It's just made the Troopy so easy, practical, livable. There's tons of storage. And one of the best things about it is the amount of room I have in the hallway. I've got like a size 11 foot. So obviously if it's pretty thin in the hallway, it can be kind of hard to turn around where I've got heaps of room uh, to walk up and down the hallway, turn around, both of us can sit in there, get out of the elements. Yeah, absolutely love this setup and just how well it's made. So as I said, Project Overlander did that in Sydney. They do troopy kits, so definitely get onto them if you're wanting to do an interior fit out. To the side of the troopy here, and one of the coolest things about this troopy, got to get this out. Okay. All right, we'll move around to uh, the side of the troopy here, which is under the awning. I will get out th this out later, but We've got Thorburn's going windows with lights. So white and orange, and they're dimmable as well. I don't know if you can see that dimming or not, but yeah, they're dimmable, uh, which is just nice to have if you don't need too much light. All right. So here we've got a utility panel, and it's got a few interesting little things in it. 
Uh, one of the things it has is power out via an Anderson plug. So I haven't figured out what we're gonna use that for yet, but I have a little idea with our camera gear that we might be able to use a bit of power out, but it's just good to have. Solar in for our 115 watt Red Arc solar blanket if we really need that extra juice. Uh, we've got water out, water in, so that's where we fill our water tank up, and we've got air out. So as I said, we've got that air tank and TJM air compressor. So when that runs, we can get it going before we even say get off the beach and we wanna know we wanna pump our tires up and that's support for it there. So this is our tap and this is for our water out. So I can just plug it in like that. I'll go around and just turn the pump on. All right. So now we have our water there. So I'll move on to this because this really plays along with this really nicely. So this here is a Max Track side table. This is the newer one from Project Overlander. We had the prototype before, uh, which worked fantastically. But as you can see, this one here has just been refined. The panel here obviously has been powder coated, sandy torp, and you've got black up here. These uh, toggles are a little bit different. You've got toggle latches now. So when you have Max Tracks in, we don't have any at the moment, but when you want to access them, you just undo that and then that slides forward and you can pull your Max Tracks out. Super quick, really, really easy to get your Max Tracks out. It's probably the best design I've seen for access to, to Max Tracks um, out of any of the tables on the market. I'll just do this back up. But the other great thing about these side tables is, is just having that bench top on the side of the troopy that you can put down in literally a couple of seconds. And you've got a great top here for doing things like prepping on the side of the road, cooking. We did pretty much all of our cooking for the troopy on this table at the side. These are one of the best mods for a troopy. I've heard a lot of people say that when they get these tables, um, they absolutely love them. It's got some a little uh, groove here so you can put a tea towel in. It's got a bottle opener up the top either side. But the great thing about this whole setup is, is we've got the table here. So we've got our cooker set up. We have our cutlery hanging up. We've got our tap here. So if I've got the pot on, I can quickly fill the pot up or wash something if I need to. And then when we have our spare tire on here, we have the bin bag on the side when this, on the spare tire. So we've got cooking, water, bin. So it's all really nicely self-contained. A bit of light from when you're cooking at night. You don't need much. And that, bar, that strip, LED strip there is perfect for that. And then obviously with the awning, when the awning's out, you're undercover, you're in the shade, you're out of the elements. This whole cooking section here is one of the best parts about the Troopy. And I think this table is probably the best on the market. I know there's a few other that have, kind of have like a bar, which breaks up your nice flat surface. Um, the way you get out the Max Tracks is a bit complicated on some of them. I think this just looks fantastic with the powder coated alley, but also functionality wise, it's the best on the market. All right, now we've run through this section here. Let's run through the awning that we have. So this one is from Destination Four Wheel Drive. Australian made product, made up in cans. So I'll set it up. It's a self standing awning, so you don't need any poles. Now this awning, if you haven't seen it before from Destination 4 Drive, it has a bit of a party trick. And it has telescopic arms. So I click them out, I click them into position. And what this does is it gives me a square edge. So no other 270 degree awning on the market does this. And I'll show you the amount of coverage it gives. So I'm just going to do it up. There we go. And tighten it up. So it's really nice and taut now. Now, just that set up as it is, is gonna be really good in really strong winds. But if you want, you can tie it down uh, with some ropes and some pegs at these edges. But as you see, because of the telescopic arms, you're not cutting off any of the area under the troopy here. So you've got nice square edges. I believe it's two meters by three meters by three meters by two meters. And I know that other 270 degree awnings cut off this section here. So if it's raining, half of your door and you is in the rain. Not the case with this awning from Destination 4 Wheel Drive. As I said, Australian made, wax converters canvas, super strong hinge. This thing is just really well made, really uh, inventive with its telescopic arms. 
and yeah just a great product great awning you can't beat these quick awnings for a quick bit of shade when you're um you know up in the top end you stop for lunch and you really just need uh, to get out of that sun when you're making lunch pop it up it's up in 30 seconds pack up's not much longer it's about a minute minute 30. Uh, so yeah really really good product there might move around to the other side and i'll show you our shower setup and what we've got going on there all right this is the bathroom side of the troopy uh, so i will get this bathroom tent out uh, later which is from destination four drive as well but i'll just show you what's going on here so again another thorburn's gold wing these things are absolutely fantastic six mil alley so very very strong very sturdy and just a very simple but good design all right, so this is our shower set up in here. Usually we would have our toiletry bag here. This is our shower outlet. So we've got a little shower rose that we just plug in to the shower, suction cups onto there. And then, yeah, you've got a great shower. You've got all access to your toiletries. We've got, you know, hand sanitizer, even just at servos, you want to hand sanitize your, your hands quickly. You can just do that. Got a little mirror and everything there. Again, more lights. So when you're having a shower, um, you can get a bit of light. So this whole thing is fantastic. Love having a shower when you're out in the tracks and touring because, you know, I feel going to bed when you're clean is so much nicer than when you're dirty. All right, I'll show you how the shower tent works because again, it's from Destination 4 Drive. So the same company that made the awning. And again, it has a really nice innovative uh, thing going on with its design. Now like that. So it's on gas struts for one. So it just pops out. Really easy. And then again, it's got the telescopic arms. So the arms come out. So yeah, absolutely massive. If you're so inclined, you could have multiple people in here. Um, yeah, I find having a bit more room, I'll just open this up. Having a bit more room in a shower tent is good because when it's windy, you can pin the sides down, but when it's windy, uh, you know, the, sh the sides don't touch you. If they're covered in water, it'd be quite cold. So that's just really nice having a little bit of extra room. You could also have a toilet in here if you want. Door folds up again. So yeah, really nice self-contained little shower unit. And uh, yeah, really good, well-made product. So let's move on to another really major element of the Troopy, and that is a 12-volt system. So one of the most important elements of any touring system is your 12-volt system. Uh, keeps you off-grid for longer, allows you to have things like your fridges and your freezers and this really up the level of comfort you can have out in the track. Our system is from Red Arc, again, an Australian company. Really, really good stuff. They've been in the game for a while now. So the main system is sort of behind my seat here, so it's a little bit hard to get to, but I'll let Holly poke the camera in. All right. So the basis of the system is the Manager 30, uh, paired up with the TVMS Rogue. So everything's switched through the Rogue. It's one of their new units, and it's uh, just really nice and slim, and it's a lot slimmer than their older TVMS and uh, is perfect just for our needs. That's so we've got the Manager 30, so that allows us to um, charge from the car, uh, solar, and also 240. We've got 200 amp hours of the Hydro batteries. They're hidden behind that panel there. 200 amp hours of lithium battery. Lithium, it's fantastic because you can run it, you can push out 12 volts right down to, you know, your sort of 20% and maybe even a bit lower, uh, which you can't do with an AGM battery. They're probably a quarter of the way of the AGM battery for the uh, capacity. So yeah, I can't praise lithium batteries highly enough now. We also have a 2000 watt red arc inverter. That's just great having that little bit more wattage on the inverter just allows us to run things like we could run toasters, hair dryers, um, things like that. Gives us a bit of flexibility with what we can do with it. Uh, for Holly and I, we do do a lot of filming and we have a lot of film gear so we charge a lot of gear run a lot of laptops so it's great having that inverter i'll run around to the back which is sort of our control center uh, we have the red arc red vision screen at the back here so this screen is just on a ram mount um, so it's adjustable so from inside i can swivel the screen around to me but that just turns it on there so as you can see i already have the pump on so that's the pump on that's the inverter there. That is for our 12 volt travel buddy. And this one here is for our hot water shower. So it's just great having it there. I can just check how much battery we've got. I can see how much is either going in or out and whether we need to plug in the solar blanket. And so we've got the 115 watt solar blanket. And then on top of the roof, we have a 180 watt panel. 
uh, which is just hard mounted there on a front runner rack. So yeah, it's great having a bit of solar for when you're stopped up for a couple of days, you can get the blanket out and you can really just extend the amount of time you stay. The 200 amp hours gives us a really good amount of um, power. If we're not running the center console as a freezer, which does suck a lot of juice, and we're just running this, Honestly, overnight, it'll use 4%, 5%, and then it'll just charge back up during the day just with solar. But when you're using all the water and induction cooking and fridge, freezers and fridges and things like that, you can drain it over a couple of days. But the fact that we can even stay uh, for a couple of days and run that kind of gear uh, is pretty amazing. So love that this Red Vision screen is just at the back. It's our control center. And as I said, we can control it through our head unit in the center as well. Uh, so yeah, it just works. Uh, all the 12 volt was done at Project Overlander. Very tidy job. Uh, it's all fused up correctly. All the wear points and everything. Uh, it's just been done really well. And the Red Arc gear is just so nice. I just like that it's Australian made. I think they're doing really good stuff. So yeah, absolutely love the 12 volt system and what it allows us to do uh, when we're touring. So just behind the passenger seat here, we have our TJM twin air compressor. Uh, it's a massive air compressor huge flow it's a bit of overkill but we love it because we've got 35 inch tires pumping four of those up can take a while if you've got a small low output air compressor so this gets them up really nice and quickly we've got the six liter tank which allows us to have a bit of compressed air so if we want to blow things out like air filters or uh, just clean things up with the air hose um, you can do do that with the compressed air so it's really good so yeah it's a bit of overkill but we absolutely love it so it's a tjm twin air compressor all right, so there's still a lot of little elements with this Troopy with our camping gear and how we use it. If you want to see all that, we do travel videos all over some of the remotest parts of the country in Australia. Uh, so definitely check those videos out if you want to see how we use this thing, where we've taken it, and all the little uh, camping things that we uh, also have with the car. But thanks for watching that in-depth walkthrough of the Troopy. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like and a comment below. If you have any questions about anything on the car, I'll be more than happy to answer it for you. Uh, but thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.